Hello, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to install Clipper, the 3D printer firmware, on almost any printer there is. There's a lot to go over, so let's get started. So first things first, you may notice looking down at the timeline, this isn't a multi-hour video, and I only have one printer on my desk here. This is my newly built Rat Rig V Minion. So what gives? Well, title's a little bit clickbaity, but what we're going to be doing in today's video is I'm going to be installing Clipper on my Rat Rig V Minion, and since this machine does not have a stock configuration, I'm not using any of the stock electronics, I'm using something completely different, we're going to have to go ahead and install Clipper and create a brand new configuration for this printer. So while doing so, I'm going to cover where you can find all the documentation and all the references that you need, as well as answer some common questions that arise when you go about installing Clipper on pretty much any 3D printer. So let's get started. Now what this video will not be covering is each step in depth. I'm going to be providing you with documentation and references of how to go about doing everything. However, I'm not going to really dive into each step individually. For example, installing Clipper, there's plenty of videos already out there for installing Clipper. There will also be plenty of links in the description for these references as well. Now, the first thing about installing Clipper is you need to install Clipper on something. And for most people, that will be a Raspberry Pi. Now, a common question I get asked is, do you have to install Clipper on a Raspberry Pi? The answer is no. Clipper can be installed on most things that run Linux. So for example, if you want to install Clipper on say an Orange Pi or a BeagleBone or a desktop, for example, you can, as long as it runs Linux. Now, not all devices are fully supported and depending on which device you wish to run Clipper on, you will have to look up a guide for installing Clipper on that specific device. Also, you may run into issues with support and issues with hardware. So for example, on my Orange Pi Zero here, uh, the Wi-Fi is extremely spotty with Clipper. So while I have installed installed Clipper and tested it on here, I really don't recommend this device. So running Clipper on a Raspberry Pi, you're going to get a lot more support. Also the installation process for installing Clipper on a non Raspberry Pi is a little bit more in depth. There are no pre-made images available. So you're basically going to have to install Linux on whatever board you wish to run it on. And then you have to individually install each component of Clipper and then install your interface manually as well. There is no one click install with these options. Going back to the Raspberry Pi, which Raspberry Pi do I need? Do I need to go out and buy a Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig? The answer is no. Uh, if you plan on running with no webcam and you're okay with running the Clipper interface, either fluid or mainsail, you can get by with a lowly Raspberry Pi Zero in most use cases. However, for most users, if you plan on running a webcam, which most of us do now for ease of use with printers nowadays, and if you plan on running uh, Octoprint, you're gonna want something like a Raspberry Pi 3A or even a Zero 2W or better. For most users, a Raspberry Pi 3B or even 3B Plus is plenty sufficient. So while the Raspberry Pi 4 is the new shiny one, if you only have a Raspberry Pi 3, you really don't need to upgrade. On most of my machines, I have a Raspberry Pi 3B or 3B Plus, and I've never encountered any performance issues on any of them. Now, when it comes to installing Clipper, you need to pick an interface and you really have two options, but one option has two options if that makes sense. So on one hand, you have Octoprint. And for those that have been involved with 3D printing, you probably know what Octoprint is. Now, the advantage of using Octoprint is it has access to all the add-ons that Octoprint comes with. Many beneficial ones, such as spaghetti detective, time-lapse add-ons, uh, monitoring add-ons, power-off add-ons. There's a ton of add-ons with Octoprint that make it extremely useful, extremely handy. On the downside of Octoprint, though, it is a little bit heavier of an installation and requires more resources. So if you're running it on a lower power rack, Raspberry Pi, you may want to look at something lighter weight. So on the opposite side of Octoprint though, we have the dedicated Clipper interfaces. These are interfaces designed specifically for Clipper. You have Fluid and you have Mainsail. Now at this time of this video, uh, Mainsail has been in development uh, more recently. Fluid was on hiatus for a while in terms of development, but has recently restarted. So the thing is, depending on when you're watching this video, one might be ahead of the other, but they're both currently in active development. Now, when it comes between the two, both are perfectly functional and both will run a printer pretty much the same. Your choice of which one to go with really comes down to which interface you prefer the most and the configurations are the same. So if you want to run one and test it and then switch to the other, it's just a simple matter of saving your config, switching to the other, and then installing the config. It's not a big process. Now, when it comes to installing either mainsail, fluid, 
or Octoprint, all three have their own setup guides on their own websites. And I'll have all these websites linked below. So just follow the guides or follow a YouTube video for installing. I do recommend though, always reference the actual written documents because a YouTube video can quickly become out of date. So always make sure you're following the latest guide for installing either option. Now you will notice at one point during the installation and setup guide, you're gonna come across a point where you need to make a flash file. And this is for flashing the controller board on your 3D printer. So for those unfamiliar with Clipper and how it operates, Clipper is actually running on the Raspberry Pi in our case here. And it's doing all the computation on the Raspberry Pi. The controller board is just handling the input and the output and taking commands from the Raspberry Pi. It's not doing any math at all, basically. So the advantage of that is you're able to utilize the higher performing MCU of the Raspberry Pi versus the MCU of just the controller board. Also, you have the advantage of using multiple controllers. So with Clipper, you can run multiple controller boards connected to the same Raspberry Pi. This is a good option if you're looking to expand an existing printer or build a printer that uses more steppers than your average controller board has. Now, when it comes to making this flash file, it's actually relatively simple, but it can seem daunting at first. And what you're going to need to know when it comes to making the flash file is which controller you are using because that's going to dictate what settings you use to make the flash file. So in our case here, we're using the Raspberry Pi Pico. So if you go to the Clipper GitHub and go down to the SKR Pico example configuration, you will see at the top of it here, it has the settings you need for the make flash command. So in our case here, uh, we just need to ensure that it is set to RP2040 with USB communication enabled when we go to make our flash file. Now other controller boards, will have different options that you need to set up. So example, an SKR2 is a little bit more in depth. There's more settings you have to set up. Now, if you take a look at the example configs here, you will see there are example configurations for standalone controller boards, but you're also gonna see example configurations for printers. So for example, if you were planning on installing Clipper on your Creality CR10 with the stock controller board, these would be the settings that you would use. And also, I'll touch on it later, but this would be the configuration that you use for a stock setup. Now, if you are installing Clipper on a stock commercial printer, but with an upgraded controller board, you're going to have to flash it obviously with whatever controller board firmware and not the printer. So if you have an Ender 3 again, but you're running an upgraded, say an SKR controller, you're gonna have to flash it as an SKR, not as an Ender. This has actually tripped a few people up according to my uh, inbox. So at this point we have Clipper installed on our Raspberry Pi. We have our firmware flashed on our controller board and we're ready to move on to the configuration. Again, I'm glossing over some of the finer details. So be sure to follow the proper procedures for both of those steps. Now, when you connect to your printer, and by the way, if you don't know the IP address of your printer on your home network, most routers you can log into and it should give you a list of the IP address of everything connected to the printer. You'll either see Octoprint, Mainsail or Fluid as the name of the default device. Now you can see here, we are missing our printer.cfg file. It's the file that would control your printer. This has, is it a Core XY, is it a Delta, uh, limits, end stops, thermistor profiles, that sort of thing. So we need a printer.cfg for our machine to work. Now, depending on what machine you are installing Clipper on, this could be either a simple copy and paste process, or you're gonna be spending some time looking at a pin diagram. So let's get started. So the easiest Clipper install you'll see is a machine that is basically stock and already has a default profile. So say for example, you were running Clipper on a stock Ender 5. In that case, you would basically just copy the stock Ender 5 Clipper configuration. And again, depending on your interface, this process might be a little bit different, but you would create a file called printer.cfg and you would paste that default profile. Again, this part up here is your steps for making the flash file for the controller board, along with some other potential relevant information depending on your printer. But we're not installing Clipper on an Ender 5 here. We have a custom machine. So how do you go about installing Clipper on a machine that's either custom or not stock? This is where a pin diagram is gonna come into play and you're gonna to need to find the pin diagram for your controller. So in our case here, we are running an SKR Pico and this is the pin diagram for it. For reference, here's a pin diagram for an SKR 1.4, and here's a pin diagram for a ramps. So depending on how you have things plugged in and where, these numbers right here, these pin numbers, so you have pin D3, pin D2, pin IO25, pin IO16, they're gonna be called different things depending on what the MCU is. So there's no universal standard for what the pin numbers are. So go off of what the pin diagram says. You're gonna be needing to reference this at this point. So. We'll start with the simpler one. 
if you're running a, say, stock Ender 3, however, you've swapped the controller board out because you had a first gen Ender and you don't like the noise. So you're now running an SKR Mini E3. In that case, what you would do is you would copy the stock printer config for an Ender 3. And then what you're going to have to do is go through the configuration and you're going to have to go through and change pin assignments to match your new controller board, but using the configuration from the stock printer. So for example here, the bed heater is controlled by pin PD4 on the stock Ender 3 configuration on the stock controller board. However, we are now running say an SKR 1.4. So on an SKR 1.4, the heated bed controller pin is PC9. So we would go in here and change PD4 to PC9. And we would have to do this for the sensor pin, um, fan pins, motor pins, so your step pin, your direction pin, enable pin, etc. You're going to have to go through and basically adjust all the pins to match your new controller board. Now, this is something that having a dual screen monitor can make very handy, uh, but it's really not a hard process. And the good thing with Clipper is usually if something is wrong, it'll give you a warning. So once you're done modifying your printer.cfg file and you come back to the main interface, uh, if you forgot something, usually it'll call it out. So in our case here, because I have a printer.cfg file, but I don't have anything in it right now, um, it's missing an MCU section. So now for my rat rig V minion here, I'm creating a printer configuration completely from scratch for this video series. And that's a lot more involved than copy and pasting a default configuration or swapping some pin assignments. So that's unfortunately gonna have to wait till part two of this video series. If you have any questions on what I've covered so far, please ask them in the comments below. Or if you would like to see something else added to this video series, make sure you ask that there. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss any future parts along with any of my weekly live streams. If you would like to help support the content I create and the things I do, I have links in the description. On your way out, make sure you like that smash button. And as always, I hope you learned something new and have yourselves a great day. Cheers. And there are many different options available for getting a config on your printer. Hi, Dada. Hi, Calvin.